So here is a video review and gameplay for the new Vetrix homebrew game, Big Blue. And I gotta say, it's uh, the packaging was obviously really impressive, as you saw from my unboxing video. So let's take a look at the game itself. Now I just reset, and when the game first comes up, you get four options. Uh, the numbers on the left correspond to the numbers on the Vetrix controller. So. Your options are pretty obvious. Uh, one is to actually play the game Big Blue itself. Option two will take you to the treasure and fish collection room, which is very similar to a feature that is in another Vetrix game called Web Wars. Um, and then three is for a, a simple little bonus game that is included. And then number four is for the calibration feature. And I will go through the calibration real quick because that is a really nice feature that I wish more uh, Vetrix games have. There are several homebrew games that do allow calibration. Uh, Vector Pilot, another game I did a video on, is one of them. But uh, this is another. So I'm going to choose option four for the calibration. And again, this is required on some Vectrix games because like a lot of electronics and a lot of uh, TV tubes, not everything is the same, or not every Vetrix is the same. So the calibration allows you to adjust, in this case, the air meter box uh, up and down on your screen until it fits properly within the overlay. So you can see that as I move it down, you see the little air box in the upper right move up and down. Just like that. <clears throat> okay. Mine is pretty close. It's close enough. And then once you have your adjustment set where you need it to, then you press uh, button 1 to save the settings. And again, the calibration is to line up the graphics properly within the overlay for a better gameplay experience. So with that, let's check out the game Big Blue. I'm going to push button 1 to select. Okay. Hopefully that's not too loud. I'm going to turn it down just a hair. Like that. So in the game Big Blue, you start off on this map screen of the island. And the island has five dive sites or locations that you can choose from. And the goal of the game in Big Blue is to choose the dive site to find the key and then in turn, once you have the key, you locate the dive site to find the treasure chest. And that is basically the ultimate goal of the game. Find the key, find the treasure, retrieve the treasure back to your boat. And you can start from any dive site you want on each level. Each level will increase the amount of screens that you have to dive through in order to uh, locate the key and the treasure chest. Now you always have the same number of dive sites, five dive locations, but the actual number of screens you traverse through each level will increase. In this particular case, level one starts with two main screens that you go through, and you can see that because it says depth equals two, so the number in the lower left indicates essentially how many screens to traverse. So I'm going to start with the first dive location. There's our little boat at the top. It looks reminiscent to the uh, small fishing or uh, travel boat or tourist boat in the movie Jaws. And then there's our little diver below it, and he is really nicely animated. It's one of the things I really like uh, about this game is the graphics are very well animated and very clear and sharp. I even like the little air bubbles that move back and forth. So, you use the controller to move your diver around. Left, right, up, down diagonally. Button 1's only function is when you want to change and go back to your ship, you move up to the boat, hit button 1 to go back to the dive map screen, and to hit button 1 again to select your dive location. Button 2 allows you to boost and swim faster at the expense of using up twice as much air. Buttons 3 and 4 are used to pause and unpause the game. So yeah, so let's play a quick uh, round or two of uh, Big Blue so you can see how it works. Now my score is displayed up here in the upper left. Currently I'm at zero points. And then this is my air gauge up here in the upper right, which may or may not be fully visible, uh, depending on the overlay. 
And you can collect additional air bubbles as you swim around to keep your air gauge filled up. So this is the first screen. I just have a single jellyfish. There's really only two things that can kill you outright in the game, and that is encountering and touching the shark or the eels. And the eels don't appear until the next level. The jellyfish, when touched, will take away your air. You can also go up to the top of the first screen anywhere to refill your air gauge, which is kind of nice. So let's swim down and let's check out and see if I have a key in this dive site. Hey, I got lucky, I do. There's my key right there. Another thing you can do in the game that's kind of a, an additional challenge is you can collect fish. And as long as you're not holding onto an object, like the key or eventually the treasure chest, then you can keep collecting the fish. And they do add points. Right now I show four points. Now, in the first couple of levels, the shark isn't very aggressive. He just swims back, back and forth, as you see here, and you just have to avoid him. I'm going to go ahead and grab the key. And all you have to do to grab the key is simply touch it, and your diver will automatically hold and grab the key. Again, I'm going to grab some more air. I used up quite a bit of air playing around on that bottom screen. Okay, let's go up here, push button one to get back into my boat. And I'm back at the dive locations. Now I need to find the treasure chest. <clears throat> I'll just try this location. Notice my diver is still holding the little key. That's automatic. Oh, look at that. There's the treasure chest. Cool. All I have to do to get the treasure is simply touch the treasure chest while holding the key. It will open up and my little diver will now be holding on to the treasure. It's also worth noting that while you do score points for collecting the little fish uh, that swim around, you cannot collect fish while holding an object like the key or the treasure. And there we go, there's my first treasure. Uh, it looks like a coin of some sort. And now I'm on to level two. Notice that in the lower left it says depth equals three, so this time I have an additional screen to navigate. So I'll just, uh, I don't know, I'll start here. This time you'll see the introduction of the eels. There they are. Now the eels aren't too dangerous. They, they don't change uh, the level that they are swimming on. Uh, they're always at the same uh, horizontal that you see on the screen. And this game, by the way, or in this level, by the way, uh, this particular screen is a good screen to use to collect air bubbles because you already know that the eels will never change their height. They're always at the same level on the screen. So it's a good place to catch air bubbles if you need them. Okay, there's nothing here, but I do have a new fish right here. I'm gonna grab him. I'm trying to. Come here, fish. Got him. There we go. Now the fish will swim away from you a little bit, but they're not too hard to catch. Usually when they swim away, their AI is pretty basic. They just go to the opposite side of the screen from where you are. And since they cannot change screens, um, they will always uh, pretty much stay at the top or at the bottom. So again, they're not too difficult to, to collect. All right, next dive site. Let's see if I can locate the key here. Well, I found the treasure chest. And there's actually, this is actually really cool. There's a feature on this in this game and it is listed in the manual but I still think it's pretty neat so notice that I've, I've located the chest but I do not yet have the key okay so what do we do well let's just go back up here and let's look for the key but before I do that notice that on the map screen now the dive site here the dive site right here where I found the chest now has a little picture of the chest there so that makes it really nice once I find the key to know exactly where I need to go back to get my treasure. Aside from the music, uh, sound effects are limited in that there's really just one sound, which is just this little bloop type sound uh, that's always made when collecting bubbles or fish or the treasure or the key. Okay, no key here. Now 
The music is perhaps the uh, one of the more um, impressive parts of this game in that it does have a very cool tune that plays and is quite ver uh, varied. Let's go down here. Ah, there's my key. I'm going to grab that fish real quick before I grab the key because again, once I am holding an object, I can't collect any fish. Alright. There we go. Now that I have the key, I can go back to the location where the treasure chest is to open the treasure and collect it. But before I do that, I want you to listen to the tune a little bit because again, as, aside from sound effects, uh, the uh, music is really impressive. So I'm just going to stay up here at the top. So yeah, music's really cool. It's a cool little tune to keep listening to, which is good because you'll hear it a lot. All right, now I've got the key. Now the shark was going after me a little bit there. Let's collect the treasure. Go back up to the top here. Just like that, and this time I uh, collected a, a gem or a big diamond or something. Cool. So, what are my impressions of the game? Well, I tell you what, I, I really like the graphics on it and the animation, like I said, especially the little diver is really cool to uh, watch. Uh, I also like the little bubbles. Uh, the sound and the music especially is really good. Uh, it's very impressive. If I had any criticisms, um, it would be the following. It would be that I do wish there was a little more variety in the sound effects besides just a little bloop noise that occurs when uh, collecting the bubbles or the treasures. Uh, now there is kind of a, an ert type sound, I guess if you want to call it that, uh, whenever you touch the jellyfish or later on in some of the other levels that have additional uh, layers or uh, screens you have to swim through. There are these uh, screens that contain reef shelves that you have to avoid, which is kind of cool. The other crit criticism uh, I have is that while the music is cool, uh, it might be a little too overpowering. And I'm not sure if I like the fact that the t song uh, basically starts over every time I go to a new dive site. For me, it would almost be better if the song just kept going instead of restarting each time, but there might be programming reasons behind that. Um, Another criticism I have, and I will kind of show you this here in a second, um, is this. And it has more to do with actually the treasure screen and the fish collection screen. So I'm going to purposely die, lose all my lives here. There we go, I just ran out of air. A little guy floats up to the top. This time I touched an eel. And I only have just the last life left. <laughs> Might as well go out. In style. Oh, here's the reef shelves I was telling you about. I'll just have the shark get me. There we go. So, that's the game over screen, which is kind of cool. Little skull. So, now that I've collected uh, a few of the treasures and some fish, I can now go to the treasure and the fish room to display and show. So, I'm going to hit option two here, and you'll see that it shows the little coin I picked up and the little and the uh, gemstone. And if I hit the button one again, it'll show the three fish that I managed to collect uh, on this particular playthrough. However, this is my other criticism. One of the things that I noticed, and I'm sure it's by design, and you know, again with only eight fish and treasures uh, to collect within the game, I guess it's not a huge deal, but I did notice that of course that if you reset the game, 
as I'm doing here. And I go back to the treasure room, all my treasure and the fish that I collected previously have disappeared. So my criticism would be this. I understand the reason for why maybe they're not saved permanently to the cartridge uh, or to the game pack. But it would be nice if, even between resets, if it was able to remember uh, the fish and uh, treasure that I collected. But that's okay. It's a minor. Uh, it's a minor thing, to be honest. Aside from that, the game is actually a whole lot of fun. I like game co uh, game concepts like this, and especially on the Vetrex, there's not many like this where you have to find an object and use it for interaction with another object for the ultimate goal. Um, there's other games like this on other systems, of course. Uh, a primary one that comes to mind would be the game Adventure on the 2600, probably the uh, granddaddy of all adventure games when you really get down to it. But uh, but yeah, I really like the concept a lot on this. Um, it's very interesting and it's very fun to play and it definitely has that pick up and try to get a little further into it. The furthest that I've been able to get is to get to the fifth treasure. Um, at that point, there's a lot of additional screens to swim through, and you really have to be careful in going between screen to screen on your air consumption, as well as just avoiding um, the shark and the eels. Because while I didn't show you in this playthrough, on the the higher level you get to, and the more difficult treasures to get to, they start to add additional sharks, or and yeah, and a lot more uh, jellyfish as well, uh, especially on one screen that's just full of tiny little jellyfish. So now let's talk about the bonus game a little bit. Um, the bonus game uh, is just a little extra little game. You just play as the uh, as one of the fish, like this, and the object is just to simply basically <laughs> drop fish poo on the jellyfish. Uh, the instructions literally say that you're you know dropping fish droppings. So yeah. You are pooing on the jellyfish to get rid of them. And that's really about it. Um, the only things that can uh, stop you immediately is if you touch the jellyfish or if you touch one of the eels. And you only get one life. And you only get one point uh, for each jellyfish you take out. And eventually as, you take, as your score increases, uh, they'll, the amount of objects on the screen to try and stop you will increase. Like right now we have two eels that just showed up. One's faster than the other. Whoa. That wasn't a very good shot, was it? There we go. Let's give me another jellyfish. There we are. And now we've added a shark to the mix. Now the items don't come. Now the uh, the enemies don't come after you directly. They're just randomly going across the screen, and you just have to avoid them. But uh, obviously, the challenge here is that as objects increase, you have less and less room to navigate and move around while still taking out the jellyfish. Uh, I do have a criticism on this, uh, and it doesn't have anything to do with the simplicity of the gameplay, which is the whole reason why it's a bonus little game. It's just in here for fun. My main criticism is the sound. It's the same song. Uh, as the main game, which is not a problem, but occasionally it will glitch up on this screen. Um, I don't know if I can survive long enough to increase the volume to allow it to be heard. That was me touching, uh, or not touching, but dropping on the eels instead of on a jellyfish. Yeah, see right there, there was a little glitch and I didn't even drop anything yet. I'll see if I can increase the volume here so we can hear this. The other criticism would be like right there you saw that the jellyfish was actually uh, mixed in with the shark so that made it impossible for me to actually take him out. But if you listen closely you will hear some audio glitching that occurs 
as I play. Now there's another example of the jellyfish and the shark together and I can't take them out. There was one. It's almost like even though I took out the jellyfish, my little uh, fish dropping is, it's almost like it's still continuing to drop or the game thinks it's still falling on the screen even though it isn't. Ah, well, that's it. That's the end of that little game because I ended up uh, touching the jellyfish. Still, it looks like my score was about 20, I think. I'd have to double check. That's another criticism I might have is that the score on both Big Blue and on the bonus game is the digits are rather small and it's kind of hard to, to read, at least on my Vectrex it is. It could be that maybe there's some adjustments needed on mine for that. I'm not sure. But uh, in any event, the bonus game is still fun. Nice little diversion and change, and uh, you know, with just the one life, uh, it's it's a good uh, it's a good game to use to compete with friends. You know, if you guys are playing some big blue and you're tired of going after the treasure and collecting the fish, then it's like, okay, here, let's fire up the bonus game <clears throat> and let's see uh, who can last the longest. So that's it. That's big blue. That's my review of big blue. Uh, it's again, it's a really good game, and I recommend picking it up. And uh, yeah, just uh, visit Vector Republic at their website, www.vectorrepublic.co.uk. And you too can pick up your own copy in uh, a big blue.